Hey guys, welcome back. We, me and my co-host Blue over there, uh, first time I've ever attempted a video with him not in his crate. See how it goes. Uh, but we're gonna dive into seven things in this video that will leave you having all or most of your brain training questions answered. I'm gonna go over, or we're gonna go over, <laughs> I suspect I'm gonna do most of the work. What is it used for? Why do we need it? How can it potentially significantly speed up your recovery from conditions like long COVID and ME-CFS. What does an average day of brain training actually look like? So we're gonna go through that step by step. Some strategies to help you be the most successful with brain training. And then at the end, probably most importantly, where you can learn more and find specific brain training strategies to consider trying completely for free. All right, are you ready? Are you ready, Blue? <laughs> Take that as a yes, either that or he's sitting over there thinking, what is all of this for? <laughs> is all of this for me? I always kind of knew I was a star. They treat me like I'm a star. They buy me enough stuff. <laughs> okay, let's do this. So what is brain training used for? Brain training is used for what is referred to as the psychodynamic symptoms and causes of conditions like long COVID and ME-CFS. It's used for all sorts of other things, but right now we're talking about, we're focusing in on these types of conditions. And there are different terms that people use to talk about brain training. It can be neuroplasticity training and you know, words like psychodynamic are sometimes referred to as psychogenic, psychophysiological, all sorts of fancy sounding words. But essentially what this boils down to is that symptoms that are happening in your body when you're, when you're sick, things that are happening you know, from the neck down, <laughs> things that are very feeling very physical in nature, very real symptoms, very debilitating symptoms. You might not even be able to get out of bed. You could have a lot of chronic pain, but in some cases, at least, people are finding that these symptoms are not due to abnormalities in the body. And I've gotten all the tests done, everything's coming back fine. And what people are finding is that these symptoms are what's, sometimes referred to as mind-body symptoms or brain-body symptoms. So symptoms that are neurological in origin, symptoms that are originating from the brain, originating from the nervous system. Now, most of us aren't used to thinking about our health in this way. You know, tell me in the comments if you've ever gone in to see a conventional medicine doctor and that doctor has talked to you about you know, the neurological aspect of symptoms, if they've ever talked to you about your nervous system. I suspect most people haven't. And thinking about healing in this way is not something that most of us have been brought up and socialized um, to think. We don't think to address this. We think of the body sort of having this invisible line. We either address this or we address this, but they are not connected, which is ridiculous because our brain is such a massively important organ in our body. It's the control center for the rest of our body. And we see examples of how it impacts our physiology, our physical symptoms every single day. You know, you think about if you get embarrassed, um, like I am right now, cause I've had to redo this section so many times and my poor editor is probably pulling his hair out. But when you get embarrassed, you know, you can turn red. Or if you get really, really nervous, you can actually vomit. Or if you get incredibly angry, you know, you'll feel pain or tightness in your body. Or if you find someone really attractive, you know, that just those thoughts will trigger a whole host of, you know, very physical things happening in your body. So we know that our brain controls the rest of our body, even pain. You know, if I have a pain in my arm, I think about the pain being right there, but it's really just a pain signal. My brain is sending a signal. Those neurons are firing so that I will experience pain in that spot. And I will pay attention to what's happening there so I can address it and keep myself healthy and safe and alive. Understanding brain training is also understanding our autonomic nervous system, which now thankfully we're talking more and more about. It's looking at that sympathetic, or sorry, let's start with the parasympathetic nervous system, which is what we need to be engaged if we want to heal and thri survive, thrive and survive long-term. So it's often referred to as our rest and digest system. It's what's engaged when our our brain, our nervous system doesn't think that there are any immediate threats. So then it focuses on all those things that we need to heal from chronic health conditions. And then we have our sympathetic nervous system, which is very important to survival. It's meant for things like, uh, you know, you see a bear or a saber tooth tiger in the woods and it equips you with what you need. It's to survive that situation. It's often called our fight or flight or our fight, flight, freeze or fawn, another mouthful. And 
It was designed for an environment that is radically different than the one that we are in right now. This modern day environment that we all live in looks nothing like the one that we evolved to thrive in. So often the sympathetic nervous system is firing all the time. It's just, you know, pings on our phone, emails, traffic, the news, you know, just all sorts of thing, things can set it off. And this high paced lifestyle that many of us lead can leave us feeling in a state of panic and stress much of the time. So, so many people that I interview on my channel, I've interviewed over a hundred people so far, and the vast majority have talked about how a big component of their recovery from long COVID or ME-CFS has been addressing these neurological components, these nervous system components, um, and working with them. And this is what has allowed them to fully recover. Okay, that was a lot. Are you still with me? I need a quick water break. What about Blue? Are you with me? <laughs> he kind of just looks like one of the pillows on my couch. Maybe he, it appears he doesn't need to be in his crate anymore. When he was a puppy, he was crazy. He'd be shredding the place in the background. I couldn't have him run free. I thought, ah, oh, maybe he's grown up enough. It appears he has. All right, so next, why is this happening? You might be thinking, all right, this kind of makes sense. I think I'm understanding, um, you know, how the brain causes physical symptoms, how the nervous system is impacted, but why is my brain or my nervous system making me sick? Probably thinking, now this is where you lost me, which is a really good question. So what it really is, it's, it's not that these things are, are, are broken or malfunctioning necessarily. There are a few different theories as to why this is happening. Dr. John Sarno is a, a big um, person in this space. He puts out a lot of great information, has some really great books. One about back pain, one about, oh, I can't remember the titles, my lovely editor will put them up on the screen here and we'll link them in the video description for you if you wanna check them out. But he developed the mind-body connection theory known as tension myositis syndrome. And his theory or his perspective is that, you know, these symptoms, these pains, these physical things that are happening in our body are, are triggered, they serve as a distraction from emotional things that are hard to face. So something is happening with our thoughts, our emotions, wherever that's coming from, and your body is seeing that and signaling it um, or registering it as some sort of threat, something that has the uh, a potential to kind of blow up your life and it wants to distract you from it. So it gives you something safer, something more manageable to focus on. Some say that the autonomic nervous system is sort of dysregulated and this is just a reaction to this crazy world that we live in and it gets stuck in this sort of fight or flight path. You know, many people believe that it is a response to stress or a response to trauma that what is happening is that this is a protective mechanism. And I hear this similar theme as well in my recovery interviews over and over and over again, that you know, people recognize that their illness, their chronic illness actually started long before they ever got sick. I hear things like, I was in a really stressful job. I was in a toxic relationship. I was working 70 hours a week. I was you know, training for ultra marathons. I have five kids and was the CEO of a company, or I was a chronic caregiver and I put everyone else's needs before mine for a really long time. So many different things were for a really long time, there was chronic stress and Finally, this illness comes and your body perceives it. It's sort of like the straw on the camel's back and it just shuts down and you just sort of get stuck in the state of your body perceiving everything in your environment as a threat and it's keeping you down as a protective me mechanism. It it's trying to keep you alive. An analogy I often use is thinking about this as, like think about your brain as a hill made of sand and our thoughts, our behaviors are like marbles running down this hill. And they go down the same paths over and over and over again. And those paths become really well ingrained and those marbles roll down really easily. So something happens. There's something in our environment, we react a certain way. The brain fires those neurons and then this is what happens. And then when we get sick and then trying to change that is like trying to create a new path in the brain. So it takes time, and this is where brain training comes in because we're teaching our brain new automatic pathways. In the beginning, it takes work and training because we're trying to push that marble down a new path in the sand. And in the beginning, it will be difficult, but in time, the more we push it down that same path, the more it becomes ingrained and that old path gets kind of blown over and doesn't really exist anymore. There's a really great book that can help you to understand this by Stephanie Wu called What My Bones Know. Now, this book is actually about complex post-traumatic syndrome uh, or CPTSD and how this is different from regular 
PTSD is that the complex nature of it is because the trauma or the stress happens repeatedly over time. So instead of having one kind of big event, you've had months or years or decades of, of stress and trauma that's happening to you. And as these things are happen happening to us, your brain starts to encode the things in your environment, um, the different aspects and elements of this as threats. Deep in our subconscious, these things become sources of danger. And once we get sick, when something that was initially meant to be a sort of protective mechanism for us, you know, the body triggering these symptoms, trying to keep us down, keep us safe, becomes long term and ongoing. So we start to encode things in our environment as dangerous every day. We're training our brain to have these new neural pathways, these new paths in the sand. And it's, you know, exercise, danger, um, you know, doing too much work on my computer, danger, reading too much, danger, standing too long, danger, eating these foods, danger, stress, danger. And before we know it, our brains are just super hardwired um, to, to keep us sick and keep us down. And None of this is rational or logical. It doesn't make sense, but our brain isn't trying to be rational or logical. It's trying to keep us alive. So it's encoding our environment, encoding these activities, these behaviors, these thoughts as danger and you know, triggering these symptoms in our body as a result. So then there is a rewiring that needs to happen in the brain once again to help us to feel well again. We have to teach our brain slowly that all of these things are safe. We need to create new pathways in that hill of sand you know, for those marbles, those neurons to follow. What do you think, Blue? Does this sound about right so far? Do you agree? Yes? Maple Bear? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. All right, so if this is the case for you, if this is what is happening for you, what does overall treatment and recovery look like? Well, the good news is for you is this step number one, step, oh, am I boring you? <laughs> He's on the move. Step number one, you're already doing. The biggest thing when I talk to people who are experts in this who run these programs. It's all about understanding. It's all about education, about the psychological origin of these symptoms. It's about knowing and accepting that these symptoms are coming from your brain, not your body, is essential. A big part of the process is feeling safe again, trusting that your body is healthy and teaching your body, teaching your brain that your body is healthy. So the first step is really knowing and understanding yourself that that really is the case. It's about, you know, what we say is like calming the nervous system. It's, which is essentially just getting yourself into a calm state, knowing that you're not in danger, knowing that your body is fine. And as much as possible, not fixating on your symptoms, not stressing over them, not giving them a lot of attention. And then it's about finding some neuroplasticity training or brain training activities that feel like a good fit for you. And there's all different sorts of versions out there, but most of them have a similar sort of framework that they're following. So this is what they look like. What happens is a behavior, a symptom, a thought pops up that you were trying to change. So let's say you start feeling worse and your brain just starts spiraling. Like, oh my goodness, am I crashing? What is happening? What caused this? Am I gonna be sick for days or weeks? How long is this gonna last? You know, your brain just starts going crazy. So in those moments, there's usually, usually some sort of pattern interrupt and many of them just use a simple, say the word stop and often accompany it with just a hand gesture like stop. And do it gently, do it compassionately, but just all that spiraling that's happening in your brain, just do a gentle stop. And then from there, depending on the strategy that you're using, it might be questioning that path that your brain is going down. Let's picture that sand, marble in the sand. You know, is that actually a correct path? You know, is, is my body broken? Am I gonna be sick forever? Is this the rest of my life? Or is this just, a little symptom flare, is my body actually fine? Is the symptom gonna pass and I'm gonna be okay? You know, different things like that. It can involve breathing exercises. It can involve doing calming visualizations. It can be as simple as redirecting your attention to something else while you are very compassionate with yourself in that moment. Say, yes, this is a symptom flare, but I'm gonna be fine. It's okay, you know, call yourself nice names, give yourself a hug, do what you can to get yourself in a better state, to stop that panic, stop that fear, stop that spiraling, and start to slowly teach your body and your brain new things. You know, this situation is safe, I'm okay, I'm not in danger, everything is all right. And some brain training activities and programs actually involve 
a big paper mat, mat that you put down on your floor. So as you walk yourself through these things in your mind, there are prompts on this mat on the floor and you walk through it and you ask yourself questions at different points and then you remind yourself of different things. So as you're doing the mental exercises with the sort of mental rewiring in your brain, you're incorporating your whole body, which um, some people find that really helps it make it be a lot more effective when they physically move through it as they do the thoughts. So on your average day, what does this look like? Think about it starting from the minute you wake up and don't let that stress you out. It doesn't mean the minute you wake up, you start doing brain training exercises. It's more about, you think about your average day when you wake up, when you're sick, I know I remember it felt like I would open my eyes and think, how crappy of a day is this going to be? Like, is this going to be a horrifically crappy day or just a mildly crappy day? And I start scanning my body, trying to see what symptoms are there, how I feel, and slowly start building new habits, starting from the moment you wake up in the morning where you're no longer fixating on those symptoms. You're no longer trying to do some sort of self-assessment or diagnosis. You're developing a level of acceptance with what is happening. Not acceptance that you're going to be sick forever, but acceptance that however you feel today is how you feel today. You're working on it. You're going to get better, but this is what's happening. You're not going to fixate on your symptoms. You're going to give them throughout the day as little attention as possible. If possible, don't even speak about them. Just pretend as much as you can that they're not there. A really big thing that people share, a big part of this is that peace of self-compassion. The number one voice that we hear most days is our own. So what is that voice saying to you? There's an amazing book called Radical Compassion by Tara Brock. And there's an audio book as well that's really good if you're not able right now to read very much, but it's basically your toolkit for dealing with life's ups and downs. So many people talk about this as changing their personality. I mean, if you had that type A overachiever or that you know, that really strong nurturer, that caregiver that was putting everyone else's needs before your own. How do you slowly start to change that? How do you change the way you look at self-care, how you talk to yourself, how you take care of yourself? Day by day, this could include activities like journaling or meditation or therapy, because many people find that you know, when we look at the theory of this being a protective mechanism, you know, what is, what is this trying to protect you from? Do you have some past traumas that need addressing? What are you carrying with you? So slowly starting to unpack those things, give them some space and be able to slowly start being able to let go of them, to put them down and to move forward. Day by day, it's about having strategies as you go through the day. So a toolkit of brain training activities, of you know, reminders for self-compassion, of a meditation practice, of journaling practices, of gratitude practice, of self-care, whatever that is. Um, it, it's not complicated stuff. It's really quite simple on the surface, but really powerful if you stick with it and you keep putting in the reps and you keep doing this day after day after day. Okay. The little guy is unhappy. There's people in the hall. That stresses him out. That gets his fight or flight going. Hey, we're okay. We're okay. Do we have some brain training we can do? A lot of this, with everything that you're doing every day, day by day, is similar to how they treat phobias. You know, some people call it gradual re-exposure therapy. Oh, he's squirmy. <laughs> but you're gradually showing your brain, showing your nervous system that these things are safe. So not ignoring your symptoms, not pushing through, not doing things that you're not ready for, but in tiny increments, day by day, taking on little bits more, little bits more, and showing your brain, showing your nervous system that these things are safe and that you can do them. And then to the question, you know, is brain training, <laughs> is brain training all you need? For some people, yes, that I interview, I'm just going off of my um, what I've learned from the people that I talk to, some people, yeah, that's all they need. And they have incredible results from it. Some people really quickly, some people it takes longer, but addressing the brain, addressing the nervous system is what they needed to recover. Whereas other people I talk to, um, virtually everyone had to address their nervous system in some degree. They had to, you know, work with getting that sympathetic nervous system kind of dialed down and that parasympathetic nervous system engaged more often so they could be in a more healing state. But other people also have, you know, things that are happening from the neck down. They have gut issues, they have heavy metal exposure, they have mold exposure, they have hormonal imbalances. So, you know, this is where all these tests that people get done can actually be really helpful because if these things are happening in the body, you know, brain training, 
most certainly doesn't fix everything. So it's important to know what's there. So some people find a combination of dealing with their gut health, having a mind-body approach, you know, in our gut and our mind and all these things are connected. People call our gut our second brain. So it's definitely not something to be ignored. <laughs> people in the hallway, big threat. Trying to do brain training with this guy all the time. That's a work in progress, right? And for you, it mostly involves treats. <laughs> so if you are considering brain training, activities or um, strategies for your recover for your recovery this would be my advice first i'd say start by listening to the recovery stories of other people i'll link a playlist here on the screen of people who have used these sort of approaches and see what resonates you know not all of it's going to be for you but some of the stories you'd be like yes that really fits with my experience uh, of being unwell and then you can look at you know what resources did they use what strategies did they use second thing i would say is don't be too rigid the people that i talk to that say brain training didn't work for them for a really long time is because they had that you know type a person driving their recovery bus and they're being way too rigid it turned into like brain training boot camp like we must do this 100 times a day and just feeling crappy at the end of the day because they didn't do enough or they didn't think they did it well enough so just be really flexible in your approach and be compassionate right <laughs> and you know the last thing i'd say around this is just don't get locked into any one approach. The great thing is that there are more and more programs, strategies becoming available every single day. And many of the people that I've talked to that found success with this, you know, took a little bit from here, took a little bit from there. Just, okay, I like many aspects of this one program or this one approach, but not all of it really resonates. So I'll take, take like a, treat it like a buffet, pick what you want and put together your own brain training program. The reality is, you know, if we zoom out from all of this is that this is all relatively new. We have some really smart, really great people putting together brain training programs and strategies, but there's still just people coming at things from their own perspective, their own lens. <laughs> okay, you're going down. And, you know, they've found something that works for them or for the people that they work with, but this might not be the perfect fit for you. Um, you know, we still really have a lot to learn here. So trust yourself, trust your gut, trust your own knowledge and wisdom in this, but you know you better than anybody else and, and trust that. So if this is something that you're considering, there are a lot of great programs out there. Some of them can be quite pricey, but the good news is that there's more and more information and strategies that you can get, use, learn about for free. And places that you can do that are here on this channel. I have gotten really interested and passionate about brain training recently, and I'm putting out more and more content every month around brain training. So if you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to do so because I will be consistently putting out brain training strategies for you to consider, for you to try, and more information on this topic. But there are lots of other people who are putting out information as well. People who have their own programs um, you know, that do come at a cost still have information available for free on their website, on their YouTube channel. People like Ashok Gupta from the Gupta program or you know, Dan Neufer from ANS Rewired or we, I've interviewed like Miguel Batista from um, the Thriver program and Jason McTiernan, uh, he has a brain training program that people are finding a lot of success with. There are health coaches that are really great. I've interviewed Rebecca Tolan on this channel and on her website, someone I interviewed said that they recovered completely just by using information they found from Rebecca's website completely for free. So there is so much out there and for a while, I think it was a case that if you didn't have the finance finances for this, that was a significant barrier for you trying these things, but that is no longer the issue. So I will link all of these things that I just mentioned in the video description. So go and check them out and uh, you know take advantage of what people are putting out for free. And I'll link a video up on the screen here somewhere of a video that I did that is sharing a specific brain training strategy, walking you through all the steps, all the sentences, everything to do and say as you go through it. Um, so something else for you to consider. If you got value out of this video, I ask you to consider subscribing and please hit that like button. It really helps the channel as does leaving comments. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And and so would everybody else. I really thank you for joining me here. Whatever you're going through, keep at it. The number one thing you can do is not give up. Just find ways to keep holding on to hope. Keep trying things. Don't give up until you find what works for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it and I hope to see you in this next one.